Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders, and it is that time of the week. It is lecture time. This week's topic, guys, is actually something I have never done before. Uh, I've done little mini lectures on this particular topic, but I haven't really done an expanded, um, expansive lecture on this particular topic. Today's topic, guys, are shakeouts, failed patterns and reversals, how to take advantage of those. I think from time to time, we all get into a trade, get our hand in the cookie jar, so to speak, and it stops us out. How can we take advantage of some of those? For example, when a breakout peekaboos up and then tags you, can we get back in? Can we still make money from that trade? Many of you get so upset that you throw your mouse across the room or this or that, and you're angry and you lose focus. We have to control those emotions so that we can still potentially take advantage of that stock. A lot of times what will happen is you guys will do everything right, right? You'll have your pre-trade checklist. You'll go down that checklist for each thing. You'll get into the stock and it doesn't work. This doesn't mean that you should just eliminate the stock from your list. All right, from your watch list and that and so on and so forth. You have to focus because with failed patterns, with shakeouts, with reversals, there's still the opportunity to get back into that trade and either get your money back or make more money. All right. I just find that a lot of traders, they get so emotional when they are doing their own trade, it doesn't work that they just take it off their list or they don't look at it anymore. So today's topic is very, very important. Like I said, it's one I haven't done before. Um, I've done it, but just not as extensive as I have today. So I think it's very valuable and I think you can learn a lot. And also in the COVID markets, what I call them, we've had a lot of choppiness, especially over the last few weeks. Um, these types of patterns will help you take advantage of some of that choppiness. Instead of cursing the HFTs or cursing your broker, just get back in the trade and I'll show you how to do that in today's lecture. So without further ado, guys, if you like this video, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button, smash that subscribe button, crush that subscribe button. I'm Jared Wesley. Let's get to it. Today's topic is failed patterns, shakeouts, and reversals. Um, this is one I don't think I've done a lecture on before. Uh, it's possible I've done pieces um, before of, of certain topics related to this, but I don't think that uh, I've ever done one specifically on shakeouts and reversals and failed patterns. Um, it will be a little bit different for example, than the 84% rule. Some of you think, oh, we'll just use the 84% rule. It's not that, it's not that type of lecture, okay? Um, so I think it is helpful because there are times when you get into a trade and it doesn't work the way you thought it would work and a lot of traders will just forget about it after that. And again, I'm not speaking to the 84% rule here. It's something different today. Uh, and I think you would behoove yourself to keep an eye on that trade uh, or possibly, and we'll talk about it today, get into some of those shakeouts. Unwall does this from time to time. Um, a couple of these concepts are in his, um, his strategies course, but again, a little bit different uh, as I think this is the first time I've done a full lecture on this topic. But before we do any of that, we have to get to when will the insanity stop? All right, when will the insanity stop? Um, never, apparently. I think I say that every single week. This week's is... Um, it's somewhat similar to last week's uh, in that it's not the sheer amount of money. It's the commentary about it that I find most interesting. Okay, um, so the insanity of bad advice. All right, somebody actually sent this to me yesterday. Uh, I was actually in the process of looking for something for this week's when will the insanity stop and this person happened to email me at the perfect time. So somebody bought... Um, 50 Roku 185 October October 2nd puts. And then they say, I'm so effed, all right? I bought it when Roku was up 15% uh, or around 185. Now it has skyrocketed further to 195. I'm already minus 12K. This may be the only live once trade that destroys me. Um, hold or cut my losses. And that's the part that's important here. Hold or cut my loss. Now, again, honestly, I haven't checked Roku today. I don't know what Roku is doing. But as of yesterday, um, Roku was at 193, 194, somewhere around there. And this person at 185 is not, not feeling so warm and fuzzy inside. But again, 
that's not even the most egregious thing here. It's bad enough when you trade with no trading plan. All right, that's bad. But when you trade with no plan and then you take the advice of people just as dumb as you are, that's really bad. You know, that's not like, that's like dumb and dumber, but only being one of them and then listening to help from the other guy next to you. Okay. So it looks like uh, Roku is in a 192 range. But anyway, I mean, it says, I'm not even going to read these. It just says, hold, hold, hold. All right. I won't, I won't finish the sentences. You guys can read the sentences. Um, toilet paper hands don't make money. Wow. Okay. Um, this is impressive stuff, guys. I mean, really, I'm still waiting on NKLA to drop yet. The blank power holding it up is too strong. Um, don't do this. That's all I can say. I mean, I could sit here and make some sarcastic quip right now, but my goodness gracious, you're dumb enough to not have any plan or any stop loss or any real trade in Roku. Like you just whimsically took it. Like, oh, look at that wide range bar. It's got to come down, right? I mean, that's the, the only thing I can think of why this person does. And then that's not good enough. You didn't think you stooped low enough on the stupidity scale. So you thought you'd just go on Wall Street Bets or some other website and ask the general population, which is usually pretty well one of these comments right here, could easily describe the general population, um, and then ask them for advice to make make yourself feel better. It's an absolute joke. This isn't trading, it's gambling. And it's gambling at the highest, highest level because you're doubling down on your stupidity by asking a bunch of morons that have no vested interest in your trading what you should do after you yourself were a moron. So it's pretty moronic, right? It's pretty dumb. So anyway, just thought it was interesting. Somebody sent this to me and it wasn't so much that they were down 12 grand that caught my attention. It was that they actually like maybe care what other people think about it. And other people are just leading you down the primrose path here so you can help like you lose more money. I mean, sure, it's possible Roku pulls all the way back and this person gets out unscathed. But what if it doesn't? What if Roku pulls a Zoom, a ZM, and it goes up to 200, 205, 210, 2, then what? Your 12 grand is going to be a lot bigger of a loss than it is now and blow up your entire account. Crazy, man. Unbelievable. All right. So let's dig in, guys. All right. The market isn't always perfect or textbook. So what do we do when it isn't? Okay. Um, so that's where these failed patterns, shakeouts, reversals come into play. And I think... Um, there's, there's an area here, like I said uh, before, that we don't talk about enough. Uh, and I think there's a lot of opportunity here um, to make more money. One of the things you're going to notice, though, and not on all of these, is that you have to be pretty nimble in certain circumstances to get these, particularly as they relate to shakeouts. All right. But you have to be somewhat nimble uh, to take advantage of this stuff. So. All right. Textbook parabolic. Right. You guys haven't seen this chart before because I haven't used this chart before. Um, you know, let me hold on one second, guys. I want to add something here. All right. Hopefully that doesn't slow things down. I just added another recorder to this. Okay. Um, so what we have is a stock that's pulling back, chopping, bouncing, pulling back, bouncing. So what do you have? A triple bottom support area, an area right around just over $27 that was tested. It bounced. It was tested again right here. It bounced. It was tested again right here, and it bounced, albeit shallow. And then the bottom fell out, right? One, two, three, four bars lower. And then you see a bottoming tail, and you think, okay, support's probably going to hold. Another bottoming tail. Support's probably going to hold. And then wide range bar, wide range bar, wide range bar, bottoming tail bar, and what do you have? Well, in my opinion, you have a criteria here that's very close to, at least, a parabolic right? Climactic or parabolic trade, at least it's, I think it's close. Um, so you have your super wide range bars. You're down 11 bars in a row, which is a lot. Multiple two or more SWRBs, which are super wide range bars. You have a bottoming tail. Um, you could argue that's a change of color bar, okay? Um, you have a narrow range, or sorry, narrow body bar in there as well, my bad. You have a huge volume spike at the bottom. And even though it's not on here, you would be very far from the moving average. So you could certainly line up and sit here and go, okay, this is a good opportunity to go parabolic long, climactic long, right? 26.15 is the entry, 25.25 25 is the stop. Maybe you could get a slightly tighter stop, but right in that range, 
I don't see anything terribly bad here, okay? And if you do find something wrong with it, it's semantics. It's a small thing, okay? So, what happens? Ouch. Triggers you in. Literally, kind of what happened to us today on a couple trades. Triggered us in by a couple pennies and then just drop, right? Completely stopped out quickly, all right? And you can see again, the big bottoming tail, the volume spike over here, and you go, wait a second, hold on a second, Aziza, I didn't do anything wrong, right? I, I, I follow the textbook here. I mean, I had my check pre-trade checklist. I checked all the boxes off, okay? And it didn't work. Now, does this mean that you should just throw out climactics or parabolics? Does this mean you should just give up on this type of trade? You know, because after one failed pattern, you're like, oh my gosh, these never work. You know, like after six or seven. Um, so most people will just walk away from this. They're probably still throwing their mouse across the room or they threw it once, but that wasn't enough. So they pick it up and throw it out, you know, throw it again. And they, they get pissed off and that's it. They're done. But you shouldn't do that. All right. And now remember, I am not speaking to an 84% rule. Some of you go, oh, just apply the 84% rule. Get back in at 2615. You could do that. That's fine. Okay. But this is not what it's about today. What it's about is keeping an eye out for an alternate pattern. Get over it. Focus. Your job is to make money. And if you're too caught up in the emotions of stopping out on the first trade, you're going to miss the next trade. Okay. You're going to miss the next trade. All right. So here you have bottoming tail one, bottoming tail two, huge volume, right? So we have on the pullback here, we have that ending volume and then we have the igniting volume right here. So not only do you get one bottoming tail, you get a second bottoming tail. Okay. Re-entry 2580, stop loss 2480. Now, could you go under this bar here? Of course you could. But with multiple bottoming tails, this thing shouldn't break this low. And if it does, you don't want to be in it. Okay. You don't want to be in it. Now, what's going to happen here from newer traders, experienced traders don't do this as much, but newer traders go, oh, well, Jared, it, it put, in a, put in a higher high right here. It doesn't actually have 11 lower highs. You're correct in saying that, but the pattern still exists. Wide range bars, bottoming tails, failed um, climactic right here. Get back in it. And then what happens? It rips. And your first target would be back where that support was. This was support. Now it becomes resistance. Remember when we talk about the ceiling becomes the floor? That's right out of PTS. The ceiling becomes the floor. Because I know, and I think you guys do too, you take this first trade, it fails, and then you come back 5, 10, 20 minutes later and the thing's ripping and you're just sitting there shaking your head in disbelief. Like you can't. And then what do you start to do? You start blaming everything on market makers, HFTs, trading sucks, blah, 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 blah. That's what you do because you lose your focus and you get all emotional, right? You sound a little bit like you're on the left. You just get all emotional about stuff. Just stop. Realize the trading day is not over, all right? You're still in the middle of the battle here. Let it go. Move on. Focus on what's important, right? Like information. And in this case, the information suggests bottoming tail, bottoming tail, doji bar, first trade failed, get back in. Why? Because of the massive bottoming ending tail, right? As well as the igniting volume here. Get back in, get your money back, and then some. Okay? So, move on to the next one. This one is similar, but a little bit different. No, they're not all parabolics, trust me, okay? So in this case, you have probably three or four, maybe five trades on this chart. I don't wanna focus on the climactic parabolic sell setup, and I don't wanna focus on the parabolic buy setup. Okay, there are two here. There's a parabolic sell setup right over here. There's a parabolic buy setup right over here. That's not what I'm focused on. So if you see this and you, you bought the parabolic, great job, right down here at the bottom at like 40 bucks, awesome. It's a, it's a really good trade, okay? The stock starts to move back up and then gives you a little consolidation. So many traders who missed this entry all right, because technically the entry did trade. This is a, like a 60 minute, I'm sorry, this is a monthly chart, my bad. Um, it did trigger right at the beginning of the month. So it moves up and then consolidates. So you might look at it and go, wow, that's a solid breakout entry, right? You have a five, six, seven bar consolidation, little bottoming tails. The stock has just moved, moved off its lows, off of support after a parabolic move, okay? And then you sit here and you're like, okay, 
I'm going to buy this at 60 bucks. I'm going to put my stop loss somewhere down here, somewhere around, I don't know, 45 bucks. Sure, you could make it a little bit lower over here if you wanted to, but most people are going to put their stop loss here and their entry here. It moves slightly higher. You can see the topping tail right there. Chops around for a little, moves back up, and then completely rolls over. Many of you would just be like, eh, I'm done with this thing. All right, I don't have the time for this. Well, what happens is the stock continues to come all the way back up, all right? And what do you get? You get a three bar play and a buy setup. Now, before we get to the buy setup, is this a good three bar play? What do you guys think? Yes or no? Is that a good three bar play? Maybe, sort of, yes, awesome, bad. So we have almost entirely no's with one, I think just one. Wow. Blue Star is just, just hanging out by himself today. Um, no, it's not really a great three bar play. I mean, you're up four bars in a row. Now, is there some positives? Yeah, you're above the moving average. You're over prior resistance over here, but it's not really a great four bar play because again, you're up four bars. Sure, you could argue, hey, that's a resting bar, but it still has a higher high and higher lows. And that's key. It still has higher highs and higher lows. So this is a three bar play that I wouldn't take. All right, now, to be clear, is it possible because this is a monthly chart that you could drill down to a daily or a 60 minute and get a short term gain out of it? It's possible, yes. But this is a scenario or an area where you want to wait for a pullback, right? So you had a failed trade over here. You could argue to get back in over here, but that's a pretty aggressive trade because you're below the moving average. And after a parabolic, you have to be a little bit more cautious. So you're up one, two, three, four bars in a row. Then you get a little pseudo resting bar and then another three bars in a row. You should actually be happy this stock did this because not only is it confirming strength by taking, excuse me, taking out the prior pivot to the left, when it pulls back, it pulls back to that area of support. So this is really, in some ways, a transitionary buy setup with a lot of pattern boosters, right? So we're sitting here on what? Maybe not quite a 50% retracement. You take the top of the pivot to the bottom, you're pretty close to a 50% retracement at the bottom of the bottoming tail. You're at the rising moving average. You're at minor price support. That's all three location items. Location items are the most powerful pattern boosters and you have all three of them. Then on top of the location items, you get a bottoming tail. You get a narrow body bar you get a decent risk to reward back up to this area. I mean, this is a pretty good buy setup, but it took patience, didn't it? What happened is many of you probably would have stopped out over here, been pissed off and either rushed into the three bar play or taken it completely off your list. Don't, don't. A stock that pulls back this far is going to bounce. And usually they're gonna bounce at least 50% right? At least 50%, which gives you room back to that $90 area, give or take, and possibly more. So you get in at 72.50, you put your stop down here at 60 bucks and you ride it back up. First target's like $90. It's not a great first target, one and a half hour, give or take. And then hopefully you can get more up into here. So in this case, you have a stock that failed to go lower. It got confirmation of strength from the buyers by taking out the prior pivot. And when it ultimately did pull back because it was tired, it pulls back to an area of support. This is exactly what you want to see. Okay. So you turn this failed pattern into a winning trade over here, but it takes focus. A lot of people are just taken off their list. Okay. Now let's move a little bit on from the failed pattern to a shakeout. Okay. So yes, I agree. This is a little bit of a sloppy chart, right? Bottoming tails, bottoming tails, topping tails, bottoming tails. But I mean, it's a little bit of a sloppy chart, okay? It's moving up, chopping around, it moves up, and then you get this nice, tight consolidation. Okay, it is, it's pretty tight. Um, so you're chopping around, bottoming tail, bottoming tail, bottoming tail, and then what happens? Likely, likely, you're triggered in right here. I mean, it only, kind of what happened today, we got peekabooed into, what was that, RCL was it? I can't remember, maybe it was DAL, I don't remember. Anyway, we got peekabooed in and then chopped around and then boom. And then you become Hugh Jackman. 
Okay, and you don't ever want that face. Okay. Many of you are pissed off now, right? You're sitting there going, wait a second, Aziza, wait a second. I took a pattern that was almost perfect, right? Consolidated back to the rising moving average, had multiple bottoming tails. It was a narrow range consolidation. It had a volume drop in the middle of the consolidation, just checking off the boxes. Check, 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 check. And then it gets you in by a few pennies or less, maybe 10 cents, whatever, and then this happens. You're sitting there just, I did everything right. I did everything right, okay? Most traders throw the mouse across the room, throw a temper tantrum, do whatever they do, pissed off, curse trading, curse market makers, curse your broker, curse the world, right? Kind of like Rachel Maddow four years ago. That's like the Hugh Jackman face. In fact, I should have put her face on here, okay? So what do you do? You just sit here and take it? No, okay? You find a way to get back in. And this is where Unmall does a good job. Unmall does a really good job with these, okay? So you get this shake and the shake goes below the initial support, it takes out all the bottoming tails, but stops right around, goes just under this engulfing bar support area to the left. Now here's the rub. This is a great entry, okay? This is a great entry, but you have to be staring at it to get it. The good news is this happened on almost the same bar that actually stopped you out, right? So this bar stopped you. This is the bar that actually stopped you and it starts to come back up, okay? Um, so when you look at this, you go, well, where do I get in? In this case, you're gonna to try to, and remember, I want to be very clear about this. These happen quick. Sometimes they happen over a five minute period. Sometimes they happen over a five second period. So you're not gonna catch every one of these. All right, you're gonna to have to be looking at the shake when it happens, all right? But as this thing comes down, starts to leave a little bottoming tail, your goal is to get in anywhere between 32.90 and 33.20. All right, once you start seeing the bottoming tail form, start to get in. So in this case, if you were fortunate enough to get in at 33, you were on point. Why? Because you were staring at it. I mean, literally staring, going, I'm not gonna let this thing shake me out. Now, here's the rub, okay? You're gonna have to, in many cases, and I'll talk about this on the next slide, you're gonna have to, in many cases, use an arbitrary stop loss. And you'll note, Unwall does this when he bids for trades. So you'll get in at say 33, 33, 20, but your stop loss is gonna have to be 32, 60, 32, 80. In this case, depending on where you got in, meaning if you got in right there at 33, 20, I think it's a safe bet that you can put your stop under the bottoming tail, right? 32, 80, 32, 90. But if you're getting in at 33, you're gonna have to probably give it a little more wiggle room, all right? but there's nothing more annoying in the world than taking a really good breakout, watching it shake the tree, and then literally go back up, okay? I mean, in some instances, Tesla did that today, right? Tesla shook the tree early on, it held, what was that, 402? Held it, bounced, held it, bounced, and then you thought, oh, Tesla's gonna go higher, and then it just rips lower. They shook all the, the hands out, the short hands, and then they ripped it lower later, okay? Um, and Tesla is finally going now. But my point is, is this will not only get your money back from the stop loss, but oftentimes these things will rip higher for the rest of the day. They just did a shake, suck up some shares, and then rip. A little shake and bake, Ricky Bobby style, okay? The volume here is very, very key, but I wanna reiterate for the 19th time, you're gonna have to be watching this. If you set it and forget it, and you, know, you walked away and, you know, I don't know, got lunch, you're not catching this. You're not gonna catch it, okay? So, a couple comments on the shake and bakes, all right, on the shakeout considerations. Did the shake break at or below support? Meaning, you want to see it go right to support or below support. Why? You're sucking in more people that way. More people that are gonna have to sell or cover depending on the position, okay? Was it a wide range bar? Meaning, was the shakeout bar wide range or was this just kind of a little tail? You don't want a little tail, you want a wide range shakeout. The kind where you go, damn, look at that. 
right? You kind of get that, you know, that Rachel Maddow face, all right? Was there a significant volume spike? This shake, to make it a really good shake, to show commitment, has to have volume. This is a requirement. This isn't like, okay, well, it shook out, left the bottoming tail, there's no volume. It has to have that volume. Take a look, guys. Look at the volume here. Big time, massive volume spike on this thing. Huge. If it doesn't have the volume, don't get back in it. And trust me, the volume will be coming in on the way down. So it. So you're saying, so well, how will I know if it has volume? You'll know by the time it gets down to support, by the increase, the volume spike, if it's a true shake. If there's no volume in it, it might continue lower. You want to see the volume spike with the bottoming tail. All right. Hold on. Let's go back. So once you put all of these together, shake below support, wide range bar, huge volume, bottoming tail, you know it's likely a shake. You know it's not likely going to continue in that direction. It's probably going to reverse. So the stop loss is going to have to be below support or in an arbitrary area. Don't forget, I should have put this on the same line. I don't know why I put it on a different line. Don't forget to consider the spread and whippiness of it. Okay? Don't forget to consider the spread and the whippiness of it. Someone's asking, how do you know that that volume doesn't mean a failed stock with no support? You don't, Jonathan. I don't know that it's not going to rain for 68 days starting tomorrow. Okay? But the odds are against it. Right? I live in Arizona. So my point is, how did you know that breakout was going to fail? You didn't. But you took it anyway because it checked all the boxes. What I'm getting at is, guys, as traders, that's all we can do. You can check off the boxes of things you're looking for. And if they have all the things you're looking for on the checklist, you take the trade. If they don't, you don't, right? So if it broke below support, if it was a wide range bar, if there's significant volume, if you start seeing a bottoming tail come in, it's good to go, right? It's good to go. All right. Now, this one was from yesterday. Eric's looking at this going, man, did you have to? Yup. Um, it's not Eric's fault. We're going to talk about that. Okay. It's rare that I say it's not Eric's fault because most things in life are Eric's fault. Um, but let's take a look at Peloton from yesterday. Okay. Peloton. All right. So we had a stock that gapped down and really bullied pretty strong off the open, right? This is a two minute chart on the left. Okay. Left the bottoming tail. And honestly, for about four, four minutes or so, this thing looked higher. Okay. This thing looked higher. Then engulfs, goes lower, goes lower, kind of goes a little green, and then this happens. Big, huge red bar, green, retests. So now I want you to take note. Big volume spike right there. Big volume spike right there. And then it bounces back up significantly, pulls back, big volume spike with a bottoming tail. We're going to revisit this in just a second. So over here on the right is a one minute chart. Same stock, one minute chart, okay? Is this a good trade is the question. So let's talk about it for a second. Before you answer, you had a stock that moved higher, kind of chopped around here, moved lower, right? Kind of consolidated for a little bit. And the question then becomes at $90 with a stop at 91, was this a good short idea? What do you guys think? Yes or no? Was this a good short idea yesterday? Yay, nay, not sure. I find it interesting how on the last time I asked you guys this question, people were very quick to answer. People were not as quick to answer because, well, they're not sure, right? That's, the, that's what I'm getting here. Whether people are saying yes or no, there's a little uncertainty here, all right? And we're getting a pretty eh, relatively even balance. I think there's more yeses. So if you look at it and you look at the gap and you look at the void below and you look that this stock went straight green, okay, but it completely engulfed all that green where I could see somebody feeling good about shorting this stock would be right here, right on this engulfing bar. So you see how you're down one, two, in fact, hold on one second here. Is that it? Just the one minute. Yeah, let's do it this way. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just focused on a one minute chart here, right? I blew it up for you so you can see it bigger, okay? Same chart, same everything, all right? 
What you see here is one, two, three, four red bars down, right? Four red bars down. And that red bar at the bottom gets engulfed by a green bar. And you go, okay, okay. It's holding support near the $90 area. But then right after that green bar, boom, a huge red engulfing bar comes in. To me, this is a confirmation of weakness, right? Because you're already weak enough to take out a wide range green bar on big volume, a bottoming tail, okay? And even a green engulfing bar up here. So for all intents and purposes, in the first four minutes of the day, Peloton looked absolutely higher, especially this green engulfing bar taking out the red bar. So the fact that the sellers were able to overcome all of this bullishness and then give you a little miniature turnaround bar makes this an interesting short at 90 bucks. Is it one of those, oh my gosh, no brainer trades? No, but it's definitely an interesting short. So I don't have a problem with people taking this at 90 bucks with a stop at 91. Chops around, goes lower, chops around, and this, this is what I call the kiss of death, okay? So it goes lower, down to, I don't know, 88, 70, whatever it was. Green bar comes in, you're like, eh, that's not good, but it retests the low. Then topping tail, then topping tail, then doji, and you're thinking at this point, maybe I'm gonna add. Then the shit hits the fan. It breaks the low on volume, doesn't go lower. It goes by a couple pennies, but not significantly. Next bar, breaks the prior bars low by like a nickel, on volume, doesn't go anywhere. It's over, it's over. Okay, that little peekaboo breakdown there, this move is likely finished. So if you were in this trade at $90, you would absolutely try to move your stop to break even or maybe under this little shelf right here at like 89.75, okay? That's where Eric got it wrong. He got the entry right, but the management was a little bit tough. Point simply is, when you break the low twice on big volume, guys, when I say big, this is what? The second largest volume bar of the entire day? And the next bar is green? Almost definitely this move is over. You guys remember it from lectures in the past. What's the, what's the term, guys? Price tells us what is happening. Volume tells us how it's happening. And when you get a volume spike with little to no price follow through, that's a warning sign. And the warning sign is run, right? All of that has been taught to you before. When you get little to no price movement with a huge volume spike, run away. Okay, there has to be follow through with that kind of volume spike, all right? If you're doing all or nothing, you're gonna sit there and take it on the chin, Josh. That's part of doing all or nothing. That's part of knowing you don't have an option, all right? So after that, the stock moves back up, takes out this pivot, takes out this little micro pivot, almost takes out 91, just kind of hangs out there. And then what happens? Tries to go lower, bounces. Tries to go lower, it's having a really hard time, isn't it? And you get a huge volume spike. So this is what made that entry to buy it at 91 actually a good entry. So a lot of people are sitting there going, well, Jared, you said you never, I didn't trade this long, but you never flip trades that are on your short list or on your long list. You always go in the direction of the gap. This is understanding what a reversal looks like. Okay, this is exactly what a reversal looks like. And we talked about this as a possible long 91 by 90-ish, give or take, right? Um, so let's go back up, all right? Let's go back up to what we saw earlier, to the two-minute chart, okay? So now you can see the bigger picture, same chart, just on a two-minute time frame. So we have the big volume spikes, failure to go lower. Big volume spike, failure to go lower. Big volume spike and bottoming tails, two of them right here and right here, failure to go lower. This stock has told you th on three separate occasions, I tried, but I just can't break through. Listen to the chart. It's telling you it's going higher, all right? So that entry right there at like 90, 90 or 90, 80, whatever it was, was actually a decent entry. The only real concern you had at this point was the $92 area. So this starts to become viable, 
all right? You can buy it up in here. But again, you do have to deal with the $92 area, then maybe the gap fill. But ultimately, it went up to $94, bucks, a $3 move um, on what was about a $1 stop loss, okay? So these are the things you just have to pay attention to the chart when it's telling you something. Don't ignore it. It's like ignoring your wife. There's nothing but trouble that can happen by doing that, okay? Or at least act like you're paying attention, right? So watch the chart, guys. This wasn't a one-time thing. This was multiple things happening, multiple concepts happening. And the chart over a period of 30 minutes was telling you something here, okay? It's telling you, Guys, I'm probably not going any lower. Is it possible you're wrong? Of course, guys, it's always possible, but we play the odds. The odds suggested here, after this volume spike, and certainly after this one, this wasn't a short anymore. It wasn't a short, okay? So that's kind of what it looked like with both charts on there. Peekaboo breakdown on volume usually fails. We saw that today. Um, and then the stock ultimately went to 94, pulled back, blah, 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 blah. So that's understanding reversal. Okay, let's move on. All right. This is a trade I took a little while ago. All right, I think I talked about this trade last week, right? I talked about this trade as a, as a stock that could certainly not only upset you, but a stock that could give you... Um, Reasons to do the wrong thing is what I said, right? So we had our gap down. We had our tradable void on the 60 minute and the daily. Wide range bar, narrow range bar, and it dropped. Okay, so you get in at 80 bucks and your stop loss is at 80.50. You're like, okay, that's perfect trade. It's textbook, right, Aziza? It's textbook, okay? Volume came in on the move lower here. See the big, the big volume spike? Wide range red bar volume spike, okay? Now, normally... This is a stock that follows through. There's no support here on the daily chart. There's plenty of room to go lower. You have a wide range bar that triggers, meaning it triggers perfectly at the whole number. Huge volume comes in, and you would absolutely unequivocally expect this to go lower. But it doesn't, right? It doesn't. What happens is this wide range red bar on stupid volume gets completely engulfed by a wide range green bar, also on volume, not as big a volume. So when you think about this for a second, okay, think about it for a second. This stock did everything right for three bars, red bar, green bar, red bar on volume. If it gets engulfed, what does this tell you about the stock? I mean, look at the volume spike. This had, all the stock had was sellers, sellers, and more sellers. If the buyers were able to take out the sellers this easily, all right, what's going to happen? Right, what's going to happen? It's going to go higher. The buyers are in much more control than we thought. Now, did we do anything wrong shorting this at $80? No, the answer is absolutely not. We did everything by the book. I mean, it's a perfect rebar play by the book. I could put it in the course manual. It just didn't work. But does that mean we couldn't have flipped it? Well, no, in this case, I think we could have. Because this isn't just a green bar on volume taking out a red bar. It's taking out the red bar by a good 30%. And it's making all of these sellers or people that shorted it cover their positions. So what's happening? So now you have a stock that, wait, let's go to the 60, peekabooed under support, peekabooed under support, because that's what it did, right? Take a look at support here, support here, and prove to us that, wait, it's not as weak as we initially thought it was. You have to reconcile that. You have to be flexible with that. So it goes from a bearish three-bar play to a bullish three-bar play, and similar to the last chart, the only thing we're really concerned about is the high of the day at 81 bucks. The entry would be somewhere around 80.50 and the stop loss like 80.20. So I have to reconcile this right there, but it does ultimately go back up to $82, which is a $1.50 move and kind of stayed there for a long time. And that's kind of where it went all day. But what happened? It held 60 minute support. 
right? It held 60 minute support. This stock should have, for all intents and purposes, should have gone lower. The gap under support suggested it. The wide range red bar suggested it. The narrow range resting bar with follow through to the downside on volume suggested it. But that's not the reality of it. The reality is the buyer, sorry, the sellers weren't strong enough to push the stock lower. So the buyers stepped up, the sellers started to cover and continued to push the stock higher. There were a lot of people, including me, because I shorted it, that said, this has to go lower, just broke support. And when we're wrong, what do we do? We cover. That's what you do when you're wrong on a short play. You cover. And when you cover, you buy. And when you buy, it pushes the stock higher. Right? So all the stop outs here, right there, notice, notice where the three bar play happens, right at where everybody's stop loss would be. Rips higher. Boom. So this is a trade that you could have flipped. Now, remember, we went through this systematically. This isn't whimsical here. The volume really matters here. Hugely matters. The fact that it peekabooed below support on a 60 really matters. This wasn't at $76. Okay, this was happening right around 80 bucks, which is where that big time double bottom pivot is. So this is important to understand things in real time. This is a stock you could have flipped. Sure, does it take a little bit of courage when your bias is short and this happens? It does, and it takes quick thinking. You only had, was it a two-minute chart? You had about three, four minutes, three minutes to think about this. When you saw that green bar and then you saw the bottoming tail, it should have been enough time, right? Should have been enough time. All right. One more. One more, one more, one more. Okay. All right, so we have a 15 minute chart. Gaps up, pulls back, moves higher, consolidates, moves higher, pulls back, moves higher, pulls back. So we can all agree this is an uptrend. All right, it's a 15 minute chart. That's an uptrend, okay? So the stock on this particular day that's circled in blue, okay? Gaps down, completely bullies, right? Gaps down and completely bullies. All right, so that's okay. There's, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. Okay, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. What do we get? A three bar play. But this three bar play never actually triggered, right? So this isn't a failed three bar play, but many people would take it off their list or stop watching it after the 15 minute didn't set up. So you're looking at it going, okay, it's in an uptrend, gaps down, bullies, great. Takes out um, resistance to the left, great. Everything so far is fine. I get my resting bar, it's in the upper 50%, upper 40% of the range, awesome. And then what happens? It pulls back. Right on this bar, it's a 15 minute chart, a lot of you would just take it off your list. But this is where using multiple time frames is really, really important. Take a look at the pink arrow. Let's just drill down one time frame of the 15 to the five. What do we have? A perfect, beautiful, awesome, fantastic buy setup, right? So you have your lower high, lower high, moving average. You know you're near support because I can just go to the 15 minute. I can see the minor price support right there. In fact, I know it's roughly a 50% retracement. Why? That's the top of the pivot right here, okay? That's the bottom of the pivot right here. This is roughly 50%. So I'm near or at a moving average. I'm on a 50% retracement and I know I'm at Price support, right there, I can see it on the 15. I have all three location items. Remember I told you guys, location items are the best or most powerful of the pattern boosters. Then we get an engulfing bar. So you're gonna get triggered in right there. But what happens? Many of you aren't even looking at the five, you're so just caught up on, oh, it's not a 15 minute three bar play. And you stop looking at it. This is what we call a minor pivot on the 15 minute. But that minor pivot on the 15, turns into a full-fledged buy setup on the five. Then let's go one step further, okay? It moves up, leaves a topping tail, and then a bottoming tail. Drill down. It's basically a retest. So this is the initial pullback, right? 
This is the initial pullback. This bounces up. That's what this is. Just take a look. These three bars right here, that's what this is right here, right there. Okay, those three bars are this wide range green bar and the topping tail green bar, these three bars. Then it pulls back. That's the bottoming tail. This is simply confirmation of strength. So this also, not just talking about shakeouts and breakouts and reversals, this is also talking about multiple time frames coming into alignment to give you a better entry and then to confirm that entry, the two minute. So the 15 tells us, wow, this stock's strong. We can see the trend. Almost gives us a 15 minute three bar play, but not quite. Pulls back, gives us a perfect five minute buy setup. You get in the five minute, you're feeling a little dicey with the topping tail, but then the bottoming tail on the two minute confirms the double bottom retest, confirms the strength of the buyers. Gold, it's just gold. Moves up, pulls back, maybe you could add here and keeps on going. The whole purpose of this slide is don't lose focus and always check multiple time frames. Okay. Don't lose. We all do it. I've done it. You've done it. We've all done it for whatever reason. We just don't like the stock anymore. We get pissed off at it or we stopped out on another trade in the meantime and we don't go back and look at it, but we're costing ourselves money by doing that. It made your list for a reason. Keep an eye on it. All right. You're not going to catch everyone. I'm not here to tell you, oh my gosh, you're never going to miss one. You will. We all do. But this will help you miss fewer, right? And you'll get more. So this ends up being a really good five-minute buy setup based off of what was looking like a 15-minute three-bar play. It turns into a 15-minute minor pivot, and this stock ripped pretty good. And then the two minutes just there for extra confirmation. Could you add a little right there because of the confirmation? You probably could, but the problem is then you got to raise your stop loss under this area. And you probably want to keep it down there because it's not significant enough, right? So my point I'm making is this two minute isn't necessarily giving you a better entry. It's just showing you confirmation of strength, okay? It's showing you confirmation of strength, all right? So I hope that you guys learned a little bit today. I certainly could have given a few more examples um, but I was in a rush yesterday when I was putting this together, so I apologize for not giving you a few more examples. Um, but I hope you guys learned a little bit uh, about reversals, about shakeouts, um, about being flexible when the chart allows you to be. This isn't about being flexible because you're pissed off because you stopped out. It's about being flexible because the chart said, wait a second, I'm changing gears here. I'm going in another direction, a valid direction, not just because you're upset direction. All right. So I hope you guys learned a little bit about that. We'll get back at it and do it again next week.